What happens when Mac Fun and Trey Radcliffe collaborate on cool new HDR software? Well, an Aurora shows up. Find out all about this new software in this episode of Twip Talks. Hey folks, I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Trey Radcliffe. Trey is always up to something insane when it comes to <laughs> photographers or helping us do creative things or carry our stuff around or whatever. This time he's up to his old antics again uh, with a company called Mac Fun, also friends of This Week in Photo. Um, and they've put out a app called Aurora, Aurora HDR. And there's another one called Aurora HDR Pro. Trey's going to tell us all about that app. I have a feeling it has something to do with HDR. I don't know why, but <laughs> something to do with HDR. Trey, my good friend from Down Under, how's it going? How are you doing? Oh, it's going great. It's a, it's a beautiful summer morning here in New Zealand. You know, it's uh, reverso land down here south of the equator. So it's yeah. just coming into summer and... Nice, Chris. The birds are chirping and uh, yeah, beautiful morning out here. I love it. I love it. You uh, you live in Utopia and I've seen your house. I've seen. Uh, have I seen where you're sitting right now? I think I was I was somewhere around there, right? Yeah, I think I pulled you out to my cottage here during a drunken party. I'm not sure what <laughs> happened to this cottage between us. We've got cameras around. I erased all the footage, but you've been out here. You may not remember. <laughs> we agreed not to talk about that. Involved. I don't know. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> Well, that's why I didn't feel good the next morning. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's talk about this app. Okay. So, okay. okay. So tell me the genesis of it. So the last time that I had you on Twip, you were talking about um, this bag that I have sitting right next to me, this, uh, this Peak Design Everyday Messenger bag that you collaborated with them on. And now you've done the same thing, but on the electrons side of things instead of the atoms side of things with Mac Fun. Is that, is that fair? So you let your expertise to help them take a product and, and push it to the next level? Um, yeah, that's right. I, I wouldn't go far so far as to say my expertise because I, you know, I don't think of myself like that. I have probably made more mistakes in HDR than anyone on earth because I've just done so much of it and I've kind yeah. of accidentally figured out a lot of stuff along the way. And really the genesis of this project is no different than the genesis of the bag project with Peak Design in that you know, I've been going for years and years. I've always been frustrated with my camera bag. I've never quite had the right camera bag. So I called those guys up and said, let's build the ultimate camera bag. And, and we did. You know, I didn't want to do it myself. What do I know about, you know, manufacturing a bag? That would have been a disaster. So I went to someone that was really an expert at it. Those peak design guys are geniuses. Yeah. Great designers, great everything. And it's the same way with Mac Fun. I've been using Mac Fun software on my Mac for years. They make really tight, fun, fast, responsive software. So we went to those guys and I've, I've always been kind of frustrated with my HDR software, right? I use it a lot and it doesn't quite do everything I like. So I went to those guys and for the last year, we've been building really the ultimate HDR package. And I say ultimate in a lot of ways. There's so many features, you know, but like just the big thing to me is that you don't need to use Photoshop or Lightroom anymore. Mm -hmm. This has so many tools and gadgets and gizmos inside of it. it has layers. So, I mean, it's just got it all in one package. Now, when, when I and when I came down to New Zealand and you did your workshop there, you know, for all the workshop attendees and you had the post processing part of the workshop where everyone's in the classroom and you're on the big screen explaining how step by step how you do things and you were using uh, Lightroom, uh, you were using Photoshop, you were using Photomatics, uh, and, a, and just a, a constellation of tools to get to that Trey Radcliffe, Trey Radcliffe look. Now, are you, is it safe to say that this app replaces all of those, or are we still going to be using some of those for, for certain things? Um, it does. It replaces all of them. Now, you might still want to use Lightroom for organizing your photos, and yeah. that's what I still do, actually, because you got to organize your stuff, right? And by the way, this Trey Ratcliffe look that you talk about, um, some people may not like it. They might may find it too extreme. But that's the cool thing about Aurora HDR Pro is that there's sliders. So you can make it look more mild or more fantasy, however you want. Right. It's really, it's really smart about that, because I know that there's many kinds of HDR kind of people out there. Yeah. And you're right. That's the whole idea around my my method is that when you HDR eyes a photo, the whole thing might look a little wonky. But there, there are parts of it that are really cool. 
So my methodology involves a lot of bringing in the original raw file and mixing in like a, a clean looking sky, for example, yep. or like a clean looking lake. Well, maybe part of it is HDR texturized and beautiful and saturated. And the other part is more mild. So there's sort of a, a transition. Mm -hmm. And this, this lets that transition happen all inside of one piece of software. And I saw that. That's one of the things that shocked me um, when I was playing with it over the last couple of days was the, the there's layers in this app, right? So not only layers, but there's also masking in there. So so right. I can I can stack and do what you're saying. So if if I was if I understood the tutorial that I was watching, right, I can go in, create an HDR photo, then spawn another layer. Um, and I can say if I want this lake to be overly saturated or highly HDR, but the buildings around the lake, I want them less so. So I can mask in just that adjustment onto the lake. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, it's a, that's a really good example. And it's a little bit different than the Nick software. The Nick software has these control points that you drop down, these little things that expand, and they're sort of like this radius. This is much more of like a, a brushing kind of system. So a pretty good example is you might like make your photo look kind of strong HDR. And then you look at the sky, you're like, oh, the sky doesn't look so good. It looks a little grainy or there's a little noisy. So you just simply add a layer and then you go down. We have this section called HDR denoise, which is really smart. And then you like increase the HDR denoise and then you just brush in the sky and it just smooths out the sky. Wow. So is it a reverse? Yeah. That, that's one thing I didn't understand. Is it do I create a layer and add the adjustments to it and then mask out that layer and then reveal the, the changes or is it is it the reverse of that? Yes, yeah, what you just said. However, people's masking minds work in different ways. It depends on how your brain works and you can invert the mask and then paint on top or do the inverse. However, your mind works, it, it does that. Right. Yeah, you can uh, you can adjust it how you wish. Love it. Love it. So lots of features in there. So there's layers, there's masking, there's presets in the pro version. There's your presets as well. So if I wanted to, I could I could uh, travel the world, take shots and pretend to be Trey Ratcliffe, right? <laughs> well, yeah, the pro version comes with a lot of stuff, not, not just my presets, but it comes with unlimited layers. You can import uh, raw files. You can uh, export from Lightroom or Aperture. So there's um, there's many, many more features that come with the pro rather than just that. And how did, how did you guys or how did they slash you guys implement the raw functionality in there? For example, with Lightroom, you know, a new camera gets introduced in, you know, a couple of weeks or maybe even a month or so later, there's the raw support that shows up as Adobe figures out that raw algorithm and, and, and issues the support for that particular file type. How are, how's um, MacFun handling that? Well, as far as I can tell, MacFun has this basement full of Ukrainians <laughs> that are just sitting there <laughs> cranking out all this raw stuff all the time. Because like you said, there's always new raw files coming out. And it's a little, you know, we've been testing all kinds of different raw files. And even after release, we found a few that don't work. We've already um, uh, done our first uh, 1.01 update. Um, we have another 1.1 update coming in mid-December. So, I mean, these guys are on it. Um, yeah. Like, for example, my, I like to fly around with my DJI um, Phantom. And like those raw files, it doesn't look like they're supported because you don't see them in the preview window. But when you actually run it, they, they do work. So... There's a few little edgy things that we're 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 working out, but um, yeah, we're we're fine. We got that stuff covered. I love it. So, what are the downsides? I mean, you know, I admittedly have not been into HDR all that much. You know, even though one of my good friends is Trey Ratcliffe, not been shooting a whole lot of HDR over the years. Now I'm kind of compelled to do it because going through the tutorials. You know, one, one of the, let me rewind a bit. So one of the reasons why I didn't feel like I wanted to dive into HDR too much was the whole idea of, okay, I gotta, what's this tone mapping thing and all this stuff and, you know, versus straight HDR. And do I use the Lightroom HDR? Cause it's in there. My iPhone shoots HDR, but it's unremarkable. And then there's, you know, there's a H, there's a HDR soft with Photomatic and that's, you know, it's got it's it's powerful, but it looks a little intimidating to me. And so I just kind of backed off a little bit. Now I see this and I'm like, OK, maybe I'll I'll play. So what what am I giving up by by moving to the Aurora HDR workflow? Well, I I personally don't believe you're giving up anything. And mm -hmm. I honestly, you know, life is short. I go I feel very lucky and I have so much gratitude that I get to travel to places and see beautiful things and take photos. I. I feel very, very lucky and happy about this. And so 
when I'm going to process my photos, I'm only going to use the best, right? I'm not going to waste time. I'm not like secretly using Photomedics on the side or secretly using Photoshop and all these other stuff. I'm just using um, Aurora HDR Pro. It really does everything. And I think one of the key things that people like about it is, and Mac Fun, I think I drove Mac Fun crazy with this because I basically made them rename and rearrange all the sliders. Mm -hmm. Because so many times, like technical people, computer scientists, they create these programs and they give these sliders the most, the craziest names. You know, I mean, you can look in Photoshop, there's like, uh, there's all kinds of, there's like sharp, unsharp mask, or like, what do these things mean? Who comes up with these words? So like, for example, we came up with a very simple word like HDR look, right? And so you just know that if you move that to the left, it looks less as HDR. If you move it to the right, it looks more HDR. Yeah. Um, and by the way, one of the problems we, we noticed as we were testing it is like, the more you increase the HDR look, especially the HDR details, which is another section, the, uh, the sky would look more and more noisy. And this was a problem I always saw with Photomatics, by the way. And uh, we thought, well, we really need to get rid of this noise. What are we going to do? So they came up with this really incredible algorithm called HDR Denoise, which is another little toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. I mean, you just, you slide it up and all the noise goes away. I mean, it's just like fast and as smooth as an Instagram Asian. <laughs> Oh God! You did not just say that. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know, have you, I'm leaving have you that been in. on Instagram lately? I've, They're all over the place. I, I'm leaving that in. I'm not going to edit that out. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're working without a net, my friend. Sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, look. You know, that, I think that's what Instagram might be for now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going to comment because I would like to stay. I like to keep my show, so I'm going to. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, man. So. um we were talking in the green room before we started recording and you agreed to because I always ask you for free stuff for my audience whenever we talk. And this was no different. So you're going to give away free copies of Aurora HDR Pro, the pro version, which is 100 bucks, right? Ninety nine bucks. That's right. Yeah, let's give away five to your audience. I love you, Twip. You know, I, I listened to you for forever before we actually met. And when yeah. we met, I was like, whoa, he really is as nice as he appears to be on oh. air. And uh, so anyway, I owe a lot to you. I owe a lot to your audience. I love you guys. I feel like I'm just part of the, uh, you know, part of the audience. And so any chance to give back, I'm happy to. So let's do this. Let's give away five copies um, on, on your website, on the Twip website. You can send people to it. And then what people can do is why don't we just have people post their favorite photo they've ever taken? Um, they can embed photos in the comments on your site, right? Yep, they can. Cool, yeah, so just put your favorite photo and we'll let it go for uh, a week or something, a week after broadcast. Yeah. And then um, we'll just go in, you and I will randomly pick uh, five winners and, and give them the new software. I love it, I love it, yeah, so that's perfect. So from, and we'll put the dates in the blog post and the YouTube uh, comment area or the description area for this show. Um, so yeah, we'll put the dates of when this is happening. And yeah, easiest contest in the world to enter. All you do is go to a blog post and stick your favorite image in the comments, you know? And keep it clean, people, please, you know? No Instagram, Asian, whatever <laughs> Trey said, don't do <laughs> I don't wanna have to ban anybody from the comments on Twip, so keep it good. Put your favorite photo in there, and yeah, five free copies. <laughs> And then, you know, how do they how do they get that? This is not a box. This is not box software. So it's just we'll send them a code and they can download it for free. Right. Yeah. We'll just give a, a coupon code. We have it available um, on our website, um, on the Stuck and Customs website to uh, buy and download. Uh, but we'll just give them a, a special coupon code so they can get it for free off our website as well. All right, Trey. So the big question for a lot of people that are listening to this is, yeah, that sounds great, but I don't use a Mac. Um, any plans to introduce a Windows version sometime soon? Yeah, this is the number one question we get. And uh, by the way, I have a Mac and a Windows. I use Windows for gaming. I'm a huge gamer. So I have a huge amount of sympathy for all the Windows people. Uh, we do not have a date yet. I can say that we are planning to make plans. All right. Around <laughs> a Windows version. You're okay? engaged to be I, engaged. <laughs> I, right. I, I actually I cannot see a future when there is not a Windows version because I think it's about like 80 percent of the audience, at least it seems like. So yeah. I'm, I'm very sympathetic to that. And um, yeah, we, we just want to make sure it's perfect on the Mac first and really tweak everything out because uh, we're learning a lot of stuff. I mean, it took us a year just to make a Mac version. Yeah, we can port it over, but we want to make sure that we got something solid. It's really hard to have two 
code base is being developed at the same time. Yeah. My background is computer science and math, so I'm very sensitive to these things too. I understand both sides. We're gonna do our best. We wanna do a quality job and we and Mac fun are we're on it. Love it. All right. So coming soon to a screen near to a window screen near you. Just hold tight, right? Right on. That's All right. Fair. Oh, before I let you go, one one other question was around the um the you know the performance of this and i know you can't you can't share sensitive insider numbers but you're just on the heels of launching this bag and everybody saw that kickstarter you know and you, it was like what did it end up at you were asking for a hundred thousand dollars and it ended up at what 4.9 or 5 million or something like that um how's this software doing in comparison to that project well, amazingly, even though it is only a Mac version right now, um, it's outpacing our Kickstarter back, uh, which is unbelievable. I can't imagine what would happen if we had the Windows version, too. But I think the thing is that it's uh, it's a little bit more inexpensive. Um, it's immediate because, you know, you can buy it and download it right now. Yeah. And so I think there's sort of that immediacy um, and the price point is so good that uh, people are just gobbling it up, which is great. I think it's it's fantastic. And. And hardly anyone's asked for their money back. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's another awesome. good sign. People seem to love it. It's getting really high ratings and great reviews and all other kinds of websites. And yeah, it's, it's been doing, uh, going gangbusters. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, and congratulations on that. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting just to, like I, I always say, it's interesting just to sit back and watch and see the projects that you're working on. You're almost like Apple. Because <laughs> you're like, you know, what, what's coming out? What's coming out next? I didn't know I needed an iPad Pro, but now for some reason I can't live without one. You know? <laughs> so cool, man. Thanks for thanks for scratching the itch. We didn't know we had, Trey. Awesome. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> awesome. No problem. Awesome. Trey, thanks yeah. for doing this, man. What's what's next for you? You're at home. You're very rarely at home, but you're home today. What uh, are you taking off soon? Um, I am. I've got a big family trip. So here in New Zealand, um, the kids get all of January off because it's sort of our summer vacation. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So and I've I've uh, I've decided to take the family on a, a little trip, a little world trip. So I have, you know, my wife and three kids and uh, a 14 year old boy and two girls. Uh, they're 10 and seven search and destroy. <laughs> and we're, we're going to go hit five countries. We're going to go to Thailand. Uh, we're going to go to Muscat, Oman. We're going to go to Doha, Qatar. It's a good little Middle East flavor for the family. Uh, we're going to go to India for about 10 days. I'll like to take a train across India. It'll be great because in all these countries, we're going to be, we're going to get the kids volunteering at orphanages and, and uh, you know, let, you know, see how the, the world really is, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, and then we'll end up in, in Italy for, for a few weeks. And we have a big, um, we have actually have a big workshop event there in Italy, in Venice for a carnival. That one's sold out. But that'll be a, an awesome event to kind of end it. And then the family flies back home to go to school and I stay there for the event in Venice. So I'm really excited to spend time with the family. And then I'm sure I'll also be excited when they when they head back home and I have some free time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So one question. Yeah. How does one apply to get adopted into Trey Radcliffe's family? <laughs> We got three kids, man. We just got them all out the door this morning to go to school. It's a it's a fire drill. Like no one can find their socks. They've got to get their swim stuff. I mean, it is getting the kids out the door in the morning is every day. It's a new adventure. It's something else. I got I enough it. kids with three. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, I'll I'll stay on this side, and then you know I can look through the window and hope one day I'll be you know one of Trey's kids over there. <laughs> so, cool, man. This is a good interview. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Congratulations, by the way, on all your successes, all these projects. You're an inspiration to a lot of photographers. They say in the news that you're you know one of the most followed photographers on the planet, and obviously it's clear why. And I tell people that my friend Trey Radcliffe is kind of like the Jay-Z of photography. You know, he not only is he a talented artist, but he's also a highly savvy businessman that knows how to uh, how to walk the walk and talk the talk. So congratulations on all that. Well, thanks. We're all look, we're all in this together and uh, the pie is only getting bigger. And uh, I just love everyone's enthusiasm. And um, I think this is the dawn of the decade of creatives. And uh, the more we pitch in together and the more we create together, it's not a, a zero sum game. I think everything is just getting more awesome all the time. And so I'm, I'm just excited to be a, a small part of it. Love it. All right, Trey. Thanks a lot, man. Enjoy, enjoy your holidays and that crazy adventure you're going on with the family. 
Right on. Okay. Thanks, Fred. You're welcome.